Hello and uh, well, welcome to all the new subscribers. I'm really excited about making more of these videos now. And so let's get into it. In this video, I want to answer the question, what is addition? And I don't mean anything fancy by this. I literally mean statements like two plus five equals seven. What does it mean? Well, <laughs> that's a stupid question, right? Everyone knows what it means. It means seven is the number you get when you add two and five together. But if someone asked me, what do you mean by add? I'm not sure I'd be able to answer them correctly. And a lot of the fun of mathematics is in asking these stupid questions and coming up with really precise ways to answer them. So what I want to do is explain what this statement really means in terms of concepts we've already met, uh, sets and functions. When I look at this statement with my mathematical hat on, it seems like what's happening is that I'm taking the two numbers on the left hand side of the equal sign, I'm doing some operation to them, and I'm producing the number on the right hand side of the equal sign. This is beginning to sound a lot like what a function does. A function takes an input, it performs some operation on that input, and then it produces an output. Except now we're looking at a function that's taking two numbers as an input. And we've not seen this kind of a function before, because we've said that when we define a function, we have to say what set its inputs come from. And the only sets we've seen so far are sets with individual numbers in them. So for example, the set of integers has all of the whole numbers in it. And a function that uses this set as an input is only going to operate on one of those numbers at a time. And we want to operate on two of them at a time. So we want to create a set that has pairs of numbers in it. So if I take an element from that set, the function will operate on the pair of numbers rather than just on one at a time. So how do we go about doing this? Well, let's see. Let's go back to a set that I've used a few times now, and that's the set of different kinds of fruit. Let's call it set A, and A contains apple, orange, pear, and banana. And now we're going to define another set, a set called B. Let's say B contains the numbers 5, 10, and 12. And the set that contains pairs of elements, one from A and one from B, is called the Cartesian product of A and B. It's written down as A times B, but we actually pronounce it A cross B. And let's begin to fill out the elements that are members of A cross B. The first element is going to contain apple from A, and let's say phi from B. The second element is again going to contain apple from A, but now it's going to contain 10 from B. So it's different to the first element. The third element, we're going to have apple again, but now we're going to use the final element of B, 12. So the first three elements are all different to each other. Apple and 5, apple and 10, and apple and 12. But there's no more different elements from B we can use. So we're going to have to change the element that we're using from A. So now for our fourth element, we're going to have orange and 5, and then orange and 10, orange and 12, and so on. The next three are going to use the pear element from A, and then the final three are going to use the banana element from A. And that's it, we're done. So hopefully what you can see is that every element of A cross B is a pair of elements, one element from A and one element from B. And actually the order of this pair of elements is important. So the element from A always has to go first, and the element from B always has to go second. If I created the Cartesian product of B and A, that's B cross A, then the element from B would always go first, and the element from A would always go second. But because we're looking at A cross B, it's always the element from A first and the element from B second. And this Cartesian product is nothing but a set itself, so we could call this set C if we wanted to. And now we have a set that has pairs of elements in it, and so we can use a function to take that set as inputs and operate on those pair of elements, just like we want to do with addition. And one final thing about the set A cross B is that we can see that there are 12 elements in A cross B. And the way that we produce this set should make it clear that for each element of A, we have three different choices. And these three different choices come from the elements of B. So we can see that because there are four different elements in A and three different elements in B, then the size of A cross B is going to be four times three. So the size of A cross B is equal to the size of A times the size of b. Okay, great. We now have the means to form sets whose elements have pairs of objects in them. So let's use this to create the set we want. Let's look at the set of the real numbers crossed with the real numbers. What kind of elements do we find in this set? Well, for example, we find the element 1 pi. Both 1 and pi are in the real numbers, and so the element 1 and pi is in the real numbers cross the real numbers. And we're also going to find the element pi 1. And we have to be careful here because these two elements are not the same. Remember that the order in which the elements appear is important. Uh, we can also have the element 2.7 and 3, uh, the element 1 and minus 3, 
Of course, the real numbers also contains negative numbers. And finally, we have the pair of elements 2 and 5. So we're getting closer to being able to define what 2 plus 5 equals 7 means. All we need to do now is define the function. So like I said, the Cartesian product of two sets is just the set itself. So we have no problem in defining a function that goes from a Cartesian product of two sets into another set. In this case, we're going to look at a function that goes from the real numbers cross the real numbers back into the real numbers. And this is a special kind of function called a binary operation. In order for a function to be a binary operation, it needs to take as inputs a set cross itself, and it needs to produce as outputs the same set. So in our case we have r cross r goes to r, but we could also use my previous set a and we could say f from a cross a goes to a, and that would also be a binary operation. But let's stick to r for now. And the reason why it's called a binary operation is because it's taking two elements from the set we've chosen as an input. So now we just need to define what this function is going to do with this input pair. Well, we'd like it to do addition for us. So for example, when the function takes in the pair 1 and pi, we want it to produce the output 4.14159 blah blah blah. But this number is irrational, and so I could continue writing it forever, and I don't want to do that. So it might be best just to leave this in the form f of the pair 1 pi. But it's a bit of a mouthful, and it's not very neat looking. Because we use this particular binary operation so often, we're going to come up with a shorthand way of representing it. And we're going to write 1 plus pi. So we've got our addition symbol back. It's just a shorthand way of writing the binary operation f, taking as an input 1 and pi. f of pi and 1 is going to be exactly the same thing. Let's have a look at the next pair of elements. That's going to be f of 2.7 and 3. And we've dropped the second set of brackets here because it's not really necessary. And so f of 2.7 and 3 is just equal to 2.7 plus 3, which is equal to 5.7. We also have f of 1 and minus 3. That's going to be equal to 1 plus minus 3, which is minus 2. So we're able to perform a subtraction as well here. And finally, f of 2 and 5. That's 2 plus 5, which is equal to 7. So there we have it. That's what the expression means, 2 plus 5 equals 7. We're taking the binary function f, and we're applying it to the pair of numbers 2 and 5, and it's producing an output, which is equal to 7. And I've got just a quick problem for you today. I'm going to define a new binary operation, g, that goes from r cross r to r. And g, when applied to 1 pi, returns pi, and g of 2, 5 is equal to 10. I just want you to tell me what binary operation do you think this is?